I used to work for the Keck Observatory and I worked in a field known as adaptive optics. Now what adaptive optics is, it basically allows you to take out the, the detrimental effects of the Earth's atmosphere so you can make a much crisper, much higher resolution image. One day, just for fun, uh, we pointed the telescope at the, the planet Jupiter and I noticed that there was a moon nearby, so we pointed at this moon. I didn't know what the moon was, but I noticed on the edge of this moon was a little bright dot. And so I thought, oh, this must be Io, because I'd heard somewhere that Io had volcanoes on it, and it must be one of these volcanoes erupting. Well, it turns out no one had ever seen this before. And there was a lot made about this, particularly since the Keck Observatory is on a volcano, and I took a picture of a volcano with this instrument. So all of a sudden, now people are looking at uh, Io and realize that these volcanoes are much more common than originally uh, expected. And this was enabled because we had an instrument. So anytime you point an instrument that enables you to look at the universe in a different way or a way that no one else has ever looked before, you're going to see uh, a lot of new science come out of that. You're going to see discovery after discovery. And this was our own experience at the Keck Observatory. And since we were the first big telescope that had this instrument, this adaptive optics on it, uh, every place we looked, was, there was this automatic science. And I made a comment once that it was like showing up a day early for an Easter egg hunt. And uh, somebody picked up on that and, and ran that in an article. Adaptive optics is really simple. It's extremely simple to understand, almost impossible to do in practice. But all you do is you measure what the atmosphere is doing to the thing you're looking at, and then you have a mirror that you can bend like a carnival mirror and you put in that mirror the exact opposite of what you just measured. The end result is you have a perfect image coming out of the telescope. Well originally adaptive optics was was developed by the military uh, to look at Soviet spacecraft. Um, it became uh, introduced into the scientific community I believe in 1983 on the Sun actually before uh, you know, before uh, day, nighttime astronomy, it was daytime astronomy that was first to get adaptive optics. Um, then uh, became fairly common in the in the mid 90s, and then of course the Keck Observatory uh, had the first adaptive optics on a large telescope. So a good example of how instrumentation will automatically yield science when you look in a new place was the very first science object that we looked at at the Keck Observatory after we had with this adaptive optic system on the telescope. There was a, a brown dwarf that was near a star, uh, and people knew there was a brown dwarf there. Now, let me just back up here and tell you, a brown dwarf is a star wannabe. It's a star that never quite was big enough, it got big enough to actually have uh, nuclear fusion take place, but they're still pretty warm. It's like a hot Jupiter. Anyway, there, it was known there was a brown dwarf around this star, uh, so the astronomers that were uh, directing this wanted to uh, take some high resolution pictures of it. But when we turned on the instrument, lo and behold, this brown dwarf was a binary brown dwarf. Well, no one knew that brown dwarfs could even be binary stars before. This was the first time that was taken. So immediately, it changed maybe not a whole textbook, but certainly a paragraph in a textbook on brown dwarfs, because now we know they're, they're actually more common in binaries than they are uh, individually. 